Hi everybody, welcome to After Chat, this is episode number five. Uh, I am Tom Model from Aperture to Pixel Photography. As you can see, I am flying solo today. Um, unfortunately, Ryan is a bit sick this weekend. Uh, he's actually been really busy this week, and I think he was out in the rain yesterday, and uh, when I called him this morning to get him over here, he was like, Dude, I'm not feeling well. So, uh, this will probably be a little shorter, because there'll be a lot less banter, but should be equally as entertaining, I hope. Uh, so, we'll jump right into some camera news. That's really going to be the bulk of it this week, because last week was kind of light on the camera news and heavy on us bantering. Uh, Nikon put out a press release uh, March 28th, so while I'm recording this, it's uh, three days ago. Uh, apparently, very quietly, just kind of put it out on their website, didn't make a big announcement about it. But they are going to address the issue with the D600s uh, directly. So, what this looks like is the D600s, if they've gone in for service, it says multiple times. I'm sure if it goes in two, they're going to get hell from people. Um, and I, I know Ryan's already sent in his, his in once, and he's already cleaned it himself once. So that'll be interesting. But apparently, they basically have hit the point of they're going to honor the, the, the service for the, um, for the oil spots and the dust that keeps getting on the sensor, regardless of the warranty. And a lot of people are starting to see them come back as D610s. They're just getting them replaced because they don't want to keep fixing them over and over and over again. Um, this has really been a matter of international concern because, as we reported last week, in China, the government has told them, you will recall all the D600s. Um, the actual press release from Nikon reads, uh, With regard to the issue with the multiple granular black spots are reflected in images captured with the D600 digital SLR camera, Nikon sincerely apologizes for any concern and inconvenience suffered by D600 users, retailers, and all concerned. Because Nikon takes this matter very seriously, we will continue to offer users of the D600 a special service with which cameras are inspected, cleaned, and if necessary, shutter and related components are replaced free of charge even after the product warranty has expired. However, if a number of multiple granular black spots are still noticeable in images captured with the D600, upon which, after, well, upon which the above service has been performed several times, Nikon will replace it with a new D600 or equivalent model, which is the 610, as we've seen several times. So, I kind of wish Ryan was here to talk to him about it a little bit, but uh, if, he start, if he still has problems with it, I know when he got it back, we were, we were chatting Friday morning over some coffee, and he had mentioned that, you know, some people had gotten it back, and by the time they took 50 shots, the, the spots were coming back, so the first thing he did was just take the memory card out and hold the shutter down for a couple of minutes, you know, for about a minute and just run up the shutter count just to see if the spots would come back. He said he didn't see any, so hopefully that's good news for Ryan. And I'm looking forward to seeing how that works out for him in the long run. Uh, I know in the meantime, while I was in the shop, he was shooting on a 7100 and he just forgot what shooting on a really nice crop sensor was like. Uh, also in, uh, in camera news, we've got Panasonic uh, is releasing a, a uh, action camera. They're, they're trying to take a bite out of the GoPro market, but it's a 4K action camera. Um, in an effort to kind of get into that market and take a good chunk away from GoPro, uh, they're re releasing a lightweight, wearable, wide-angle angle camera capable of shooting impressive 4K footage at 30 frames a second. Um, now, I'm going to put the picture up, but the actual, the actual form factor on this thing is interesting. Uh, you have a camera piece, and then, you, as opposed to the GoPro, where it's complete, completely one unit, and you just kind of mount it on your camera. I've got a couple of guys I snowboard with who, who do this for their own videos. It's actually a camera that looks more like a pen. It's kind of a long piece that can clip onto things, or you, and it comes with an earpiece, you can wear it but it actually will run a cable down to the interface, which will, comes with an armband, so you actually mount it on your arm. Uh, but the interface has a touch screen, it has an L, you know, LCD touch screen, so you can actually set everything. Uh, it looks pretty cool. It actually, you know, the, the, the press shot is a bright orange camera, so you know they're, they're out there trying to get some attention with it. Um, the 
HX A500 will also include Wi-Fi and near field uh, communication. So you'll be able to tie it into your phone. You'll be able to tie it into your tablet for, they say for control and for reviewing, which would be awesome if you have a high def tablet, you'd be able and you can stream right to it to be able to watch your video back you know, on something a little bigger than the, uh, the little tiny screen that it's going to be on. Uh, that would be actually pretty impressive. I'd like to see that. And uh, it's also dust and waterproof. can be taken underwater up to 10 meters for up to 30 minutes. So I'm actually kind of excited to see uh, what scuba divers are going to do with this. Because if they can take it down, you know, or at least snorkelers, if they can take it down and go get some amazing video in the reefs, that would be phenomenal. And if you're not concerned with shooting 4K, because I know not everyone uh, is going to want to shoot 4K. I mean, we don't even want to shoot this in 4K because nobody's watching 4K yet. Uh, it will be able to do 1080p at 60 frames a second, 720p at 120 frames a second, and 480p at 240 frames a second. So I can also see this being used by you know, some smaller independent filmmakers who might want to use it to get slow motion. That actually looks like it could be totally viable. You know, if you can shoot at 720p for 120 frames a second, you can slow that down and make some really cool slow-mo shots. Um, actually, I'm going to talk to Jesse about this because it's something he might want to look at. Um, it's going to be initially released in the UK for about 380 pounds is what they're, they're listing it at. Uh, which is about $630, which, if you think about it, really isn't that bad. And they're expecting it to be released over the summer, either late Q2, early Q3 here in the States. So I would be on the lookout for that. Uh, in all honesty, I wouldn't be the least bit surprised if you even started showing up at Best Buy while they, because they're getting the price point low enough that it's in the realm of DSLR cameras, which would be great to just be able to get your hands on and play with it for a little bit. I need a drink. Doing this by myself is a little bit different. Uh, I'm probably blowing through this much faster than, than I would expect. Um, one of my favorite channels to watch, uh, mostly for the comedic content, but because the guys are actually fairly knowledgeable, is uh, Digital Rev TV on YouTube. I'll put a link to them. Um, Kai and, and, and Moxie, uh, they, uh, you know, they're in Taiwan. They actually started the channel as just to do product reviews for, their, for the camera shop they work at. And it's kind of taken on its life of its own. And they're, they're really funny and they're really knowledgeable. And they do some really just kind of stupid things, which are entertaining to watch. Uh, but this week, they put up one of the funniest videos I have seen in a long time dealing with photographers. It has nothing to do with the equipment. It has nothing to do with cameras or reviews or anything in particular. But if you know the gear, if you see the gear they're using and you know what, what it is, it makes it even funnier. The meta there is, is insane. But their video up this week is 10 ways to annoy a photography snob. And I kind of had to laugh while I was watching this because some of the things they do are just like, it's the obvious super high end, you know, I went to photo school kind of, you know, camera snob that they're making fun of. But, um... The stuff they do, and some of the stuff they do to annoy the camera snob, uh, but it basically Kai is being the camera snob and, and Moxie is being, you know, the, the guy who has fun taking pictures, which is definitely closer to the end that you really want to be on in my world. Um, and some of the stuff that he does, that they do to annoy the, the, the camera snob is just stuff I do without even thinking about it. It's hysterical to me to watch. And some of the stuff that they do that annoys the camera snob annoys me so I'm definitely not on either end of the spectrum I'm kind of having some fun out there um, and th this kind of goes in, in I wouldn't say it's a program that they're trying to build but it kind of goes in along of some other uh, some other videos they've done that are definitely worth watching like uh, shit fa Nikon fanboys say and shit Canon fanboys say and you know 10 signs you know you're a photo geek these are just funny funny videos to watch that have you, know, you don't even have to really be into photography to enjoy it, though if you're watching this, you probably are, assuming you're not related to myself or Ryan. Uh, in which case, you know, they're just funny to watch, and I recommend checking out their channel. 
and just watch anything and get your hands on by them. Uh, one more thing in, in photography news, it's been quiet on the Canon front lately. Um, I think they're just kind of letting Nikon sit up there and take all the abuse for the D600 stuff. Um, Nikon Rumors is talking about the successor to the D800. So their, their best guess is it's probably going to be the D800S because we've just had the D4S. Um, and they're only about, you know, they claim it's from leak specifications, but odds are they're probably about half right. But if Nikon continues down their current trend, these, th these rumors make perfect sense that they'll get rid of the uh, optical low-pass filter, the anti-aliasing filter. Um, that would be big on, on a D800. And it's probably going to have the X-Speed 4 processor because Nikon, you know, that's their new processor. They're putting it in everything. And for the most part, you know, it's probably just going to be a slightly upgraded D800. And if you're a D800 user, that might be something you want to look at if you're willing to trade out and sell your current D800. And if you're a D600 user looking to go to the D800, I'd hold off for a few, to, you know, until this actually gets announced, which will probably be later this year. Uh, my guess would be late Q3 that you'll be seeing them make an announcement on a D800 successor. Uh, just And uh, if they're right, you know, if what we're hearing, you know, if what the rumors are are right, if there's a D800S, you can expect the D800 to come down a little bit, and I wouldn't be surprised if you see people who are upset with their 600s, assuming they're going to stay with Nikon, moving to maybe some 800s when the 800S comes out. That's my guess. I don't have my Nikon counterpart here to, uh, to bounce that off of. But it'll be, uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens. What I'm really waiting for is for Canon to say, hey, there's going to be a 6D Mark II or a 5D Mark IV. And then I'll just be like, why do I buy cameras? All right. So I've got one more kind of fun thing to talk about this week. And this is where I'm going to rant and, and move on a little bit from. Um, I finally, uh, you know, as, as we talked about last week, I finally... Uh, saved up my pennies enough to buy my 7200, which I'm recording with right now, otherwise it would be sitting right here in front of me. Uh, but I've, now I've had two weeks to really get my hands on it, really play with it. Um, I've played with, Ny with the, uh, the Nikkor uh, 7200 on Ryan's you know, D600, I'm playing with this on my 60. And there was always that, that hesitancy when you go to a third party. You know, Ryan went Nikkor because He's got his Nikon camera. I could have gone, I should have gone Canon, is what most people would tell me, but I've picked up this Tamron lens, and, you know, I did a quick unboxing video, and I, I was super happy about it, and now that I've had it in my hands for about two weeks, and I've taken tons of pictures with it, and um, I've shot with the first-gen Canon L lens, and that was phenomenal. I mean, I had so much fun with it. Uh, and it really, it kind of put, it gave me a baseline to what I should expect with this lens. And what works out well is the, the saying that I've heard over and over again, the numbers may be off a little bit depending on who you talk to, but, but what I keep hearing when I talk to anyone about the Tamron lens is you're getting 96% of the lens at 60% of the price. And I'll be honest with you, that last 4% is outside of my my range of expertise because this thing does everything that I could ever ask for. I mean, it's just, it's fast, it's accurate. I don't notice the, I don't notice any vignetting when I'm shooting with it except for it wide open, but you're going to get that with any lens. And it is just phenomenal. Now, I haven't shot with the, the version 2 of the 7200 from Canon, but Really, this is so good that it's worth making the investment here for me at this time. So, one thing that was kind of a big deal for me this week, uh, it's actually been going on for a couple of weeks as I've been working out the details. Um, 
Someone actually reached out to me to do a job, which if Ryan was here, he'd be making fun of me for being excited about this. But um, rather than me running around screaming, hire me, hire me, hire me, um, I was actually reached out to by the folks at Terracon, which is a um, horror and gothic convention that's being put on here in Rhode Island. It's the same people who put on Rhode Island Comic Con. Uh, so it's going to be a well-done event, I'm sure, because they do great things with Rhode Island Comic Con, with getting guests in and having a great agenda and panels and everything else. Uh, but I've already been reached out to not only by uh, Terracon itself as to come in as a staff photographer for the event, which will be very different than shooting TempleCon, where I'm a staff member who also takes pictures. This would actually be, this is your job, go take pictures. Uh, but by... Um, one of the models who will be at Terracon who wants to get promotional work done ahead of time. Uh, apparently my little bit of work from TempleCon actually got out and about a little bit, which surprised me because I didn't really expect too many people to see it. But so it will be a fun event. It's, uh, I believe it is June 7th through the 9th. I will double check that. If I'm wrong, I'll put the right dates, I'll put a little text box under here and, and whatnot. And we'll put a, a link up to the Terracon website. But it should be a lot of fun. I have no idea what I'm getting into, to be honest with you. But I'm excited about it anyway. And so that that's my big news for me out of the studio this week. Uh, otherwise, it's been kind of a busy week with having a day job. And uh, pretty much just dealing with that all week. And this week will be about a much of the same, a lot more with the day job and not so much with the well, no, hopefully I'll do a lot more up here in the studio this week because after Tuesday, my day job stuff should quiet down. And I'm excited to actually do some work up here. I've got some projects I really want to do for the channel, for the Bucket Castle photo channel. I want to do some work outside now that it's finally warming up here in Providence. It's, uh, it's getting nice out. I can get out there and do some videos that I really want to shoot, but I need to get outside to do them. Otherwise, they're kind of silly to do inside. Uh, one of which will definitely involve me getting up much earlier in the morning than I want to, but I'm doing this for you guys. I'm doing this for my loyal audience who wants to see fun stuff. Um, but along those lines, if you are interested in getting us to do something, um, if you want to get your name mentioned on the podcast, if you want to just say hi, you want to ask me anything, any questions, you want to ask me about what my favorite sandwich is or why I chose to shoot Canon or, well, that I think I've already addressed, but you know, if you have any questions about photography, you know, aspects that maybe you're having some difficulty with or something you want to see explained a little better, or maybe just, you know, you want to say, Hey, you should go buy this random thing and review it. We'll gladly do it. Uh, well, as long as it's not ridiculously expensive, but this gets more fun when it's more interactive. And so, what I'm hoping is recording episode five today, and by the end of the night tonight, maybe early tomorrow, we'll have all five of the starting episodes up, which means next week it will be interactive, finally, uh, plus some of the other videos we have, so there'll be a, a fair amount of content to absorb right away. Feel free to stretch it out over some time while we get into a, a bit more of a rhythm with this, but absolutely, get interactive, send me emails, you can find me on Facebook and the Aperture to Pixels photography page. Uh, make sure you like it there. Uh, I'll probably start a separate Aperture chat page, but we'll see how that goes. Uh, remember, you can always go to ApertureChat.com. That's where the blog is. That's where I post up some you know, uh, pictures. I want to do it every day, but it's getting to be about every couple of days right now. I'll get better at that. And... You know, if you want to submit photos to put up on the blog, please do. I'll give you full credit. It'll be fun to, to draw a community into this. And so, like I said, it's more fun when you're interactive with me. And if you're in the Providence, Pawtucket, you know, southern New England area, you know, you can give me a call. The phone number's on the Aperture to Pixels website. Maybe you can stop on by, say hi. Hell, maybe I'll sit you here and I'll put you in the podcast one of these weeks where Ryan isn't here. So anyway, I'll see you next week.